created your theme, you've, you, you've applied a layout, you've added some objects to your PowerPoint, now the hard part, entering text, right? Actually, entering text is one of the easiest things to do in PowerPoint, especially if you're familiar with other Office programs because of the light controls. The only main difference between PowerPoint and Word is fewer options for text and the requirement that all text must be typed in a text box. You can't just click and type like you can in Word where the entire page is basically a text box. Now, I'm going to go to a slide here with title and content layout applied and show you how to enter text. So we simply click and type. that simple. Now we can make modifications to the, the appearance, font, attributes, color, by using the ribbon or the mini ribbon. Now the mini ribbon has the most commonly used options on it as you see here when you highlight some text the mini ribbon pops up but it doesn't have all the options. Notice we have bold italics, underlines, three justification options, font color, increase font size, the font, and a place to type the size. On the ribbon you'll notice we have additional options like shadow, strike through, character spacing, case, and in the font dialog box we have even more options like double strike through, subscript, superscript, small caps, etc. Now if I change the font, I can change it up here by clicking and choosing the font I want. I can also change the font by right clicking and choosing the font that I want or simply highlighting text and choosing the font that I want. So if your text is already highlighted to make the mini ribbon reappear, click with the right mouse button. The mini, the mini ribbon will automatically appear as I highlight text, but if I move my cursor away, the mini ribbon will automatically disappear and not reappear when my cursor re-enters the selected text. I simply need to right click to make it reappear along with a contextual menu that has many of the same options, font, paragraph, that are up here on the ribbon. So, I can apply a color. The colors at the top of the box will be based on my theme as we talked about in a previous lesson, specifically the color set that I have chosen. There are standard colors here and as you see as I select a color I get a preview but using more colors I can still pretty much come up with any color that I wish. So we'll apply red to this if I've set a color and want to reuse it, I don't have to revisit the drop down. I simply click the text color button and that color will be applied. Now, I've made some changes here. I've changed the font, changed the size, changed the color. Let's say I want to apply that to text somewhere else in my presentation. So I can highlight this text any part of it actually because it's all the style the same and use what's called the format painter. This looks like a paintbrush. It's on the mini ribbon. It's also on the main ribbon in the home group or the home tab under the clipboard group. So if I click the format painter my cursor changes to this I-beam with a paintbrush. The next thing that I click either a word or dragging across will be will have the uh, format that I've selected applied to it. So if I drag across here, getting started with several options, notice format is instantly applied. Format Painter is one at a time. So notice now that I've applied it, my cursor changes back to an to an I beam, and if I click New Presenter Tools, nothing happens. Format painters are to do it one at a time. If you want to do more than one, you'll have to go back each time and apply that 
change. Or we can use what's called master slides, which we'll talk about later in the course. So let's go back here to our last slide. And we have our text styled here. We've, we've seen how to apply attributes to it, how to visit the font dialog box. Now notice I can't enter the font dialog box if I don't have any text selected or more correctly if I'm in a text box. If I'm just on my slide somewhere, the font group and the paragraph group are dimmed because they only apply to text. So in the dialog box here, like I said, we have additional options like uh, double strike through and subscript. These options only apply here or only appear here rather. They do not appear on the ribbon. So I can shadow my text, I can use strike through, etc. Now, if I add a new slide that's blank, I can't just click and start typing. I must first insert a text box. So on the insert tab, we can go to text box and draw a text box. Now, when I draw it, it will go to this it, the text box will be the size that I drew it as soon as I start typing text, however, the text box will snap to the, the size needed to accommodate the text. I cannot change vertically the size of my text box. I, am, I can, however, change it horizontally so I could center text on a slide, for example, and I can rotate it using the rotation handle. All right, returning to our previous slide here, let's talk about the paragraph group. So we have our alignment options, left, right, excuse me, left, center, right, justified. We can do columns. If we have like a list of names, for example, that we're listing on a slide, we can put more than one column of text. We can change the text direction. That could be useful in some cases. You see here we have additional options here if I choose if I go up here on columns and choose more columns, I get a slide out with additional options. To close this, I simply click the X. Now notice it said one of the, let me go back there real quick, and you'll notice it said one of the, one of the things was shape. Oops, not that. Uh, one of these selections was shape options. Everything is a shape in PowerPoint. A text box is a shape, just like a rectangle, a picture. They're all shapes. Now, a picture is a shape because it's a rectangle with a picture applied to the rectangle, but it is still a shape and operates as such. Okay, so I can align text top, middle, or bottom within my text box if my text box is larger. If I use a layout with a text box on it, the text box will be pre determined to fill the size of the design. I can change those text boxes however I want. Just text boxes that I've created are ones that snap to the text. I can also convert to SmartArt, which we'll talk about later. Next we have a favorite called WordArt. So WordArt is simply styled text that has some type of 3D style or 3D looking effect. Like for example here, so this is some word art. Now the options in PowerPoint are quite limited, but they are there. So here's my word art. I can do a effect here. We can do some shadow, and we're going to make the outline green. So there we go. There's some styled word art. So the word art options are on the insert tab. I select my word art, then I have additional options once that text box is selected. And notice drawing tool shows up. This is just a shape, just like a text box. Word art is a shape. It's a rectangle with the word art applied to it. It's basically a text box with styled text. 
is basically what it is. Notice I can change the shape here. I can do something like that, put a background on the shape as we looked at in a previous lesson. So we've talked about text, we've talked about word art, now let's talk about bullets and lists. So in de by default on PowerPoint, let's go to my blank slide here and I'm going to change the layout to title content. So also, oh, notice here, if I change the layout pre uh, design text, inserted text boxes do not go away. So notice when I change the layout, my text box, this is some text, did not disappear off the slide. However, if it was a text box created by the layout and I change the layout, it does disappear. But ones that you have created will not disappear if you change the layout. So anyway, so here's my title content slide. By default, bullets are used for each point in PowerPoint. This is a point. If I enter, I get another bullet. Now to increase the indent, I can tab. Notice the bullet changes. This is level two, this is level three, this is level four, this is level five, this is level six, this is level seven, this is level eight, and so on. Notice the text gets smaller each level. Now notice 8 and 9, after 5, the text does not get any smaller. But I can keep tabbing in as far as I want. However, the font will only automatically shrink for 5 levels. So let's get rid of all this here. Now, let's say I want to modify the look of the bullet. I don't like the default I want to modify it. I can go up here to the paragraph group on the home tab and modify the look of my bullet. As you see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven built-in options and then a none. Turn it off. However, I have more options than that. For example, here's one that you could use like a chat box. There are, I do have more options than this, though. By going to bullets and numbering, you will see here that I can actually change. I can actually change the color, the size of the bullet, or I can add a picture. Now it's going to load the online picture item here. Let's go rows like we did before. And at the bottom, you saw work offline if I wanted to insert pictures to my computer. But the default is going to be to find it online. So let's go to insert. And now notice my bullet is a rose. Now if I insert in, notice what happens is the rose simply gets smaller. I don't get a different one. I simply get a smaller rose. So this is using a picture as a bullet. So let's go back here and notice my roses appears as an option. So if I click, click off of it, I can reapply my roses now as an option as long as they're still selected. If I click off of notice it goes away and I have to repeat the process. So I can change here to a different one but if I change and exit the dialog box, the custom selection goes away. You can also customize the bullet by using a text symbol. For example, I can make my bullet TM for trademark if I wanted to. So I can use text or a picture. Now in some cases, bullets aren't appropriate. What I need is more ordered. So we also have another option called the numbering. In web design terms, this is an unordered list, this is an ordered list. So if we take our list here and change it to numbering, now we have a one. After one comes two. Now if I haven't typed anything yet, notice how two is dim. When I type something, two will become active. If I don't type anything, 
and go into my slide here, notice 2 does not actually appear in slideshow view, but it does appear to let me know that will be the next number. Now if I tab, I'll move in. This is level 2. This is level 3. Now notice it's just 1, 2, 1, 2. There's no, there's no deviation from the format. That I can change. So let's undo, 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 back to just 1, 2. Now, notice I can do with parentheses. I can do with Roman numerals, letters, uppercase, uppercase letters, lowercase letters, etc. Now I can go in here to my numbering tab and add a different one. Also notice, if I don't want to start with number 1, for example, this is a point, this is point 2, point 3, point 4, and on my next slide down here, I want to start over. I want to start also, but this is point 5, but I've got a 1 there. Well, we can change that. We can go in here to bullets and numbering and say start at 5. So we have 5, 6. So we can continue our numbering over multiple slides, even though they're actually two different lists to the audience, it appears as if I have one list continuing over multiple slides. Now, in PowerPoint, unlike Word, I can't change the format here and have a multi-leveled list. So if I, the format I select here will be the same. So if I pick 6, this is point 0.5, this is point 0.6, and if I tab in, in Word, you might get an A or a B, and notice here I get a 5. So the starting at a different number works great unless I want to do multiple levels. If I start at 1 here, this will go back to 1. This is sub point 0.1. Now return I get 7. This is point 0.7. And now notice it goes back to 5. I'll have to make that, make that change every time on this slide. However, I can do it. So continuing the numbering on slides is great if I'm not going to be using subpoints. I'm using subpoints. It might make more sense not to do that. Or for my subpoints, there's no reason why I have to use a list. I can switch my subpoints to a bullet. The sublist is, in the eyes of PowerPoint, another list. It's not one list. I actually now have two. I have my ordered list. And in the ordered list, I have a nested unordered list. So in this lesson, we talked about formatting and editing text, word art, and ordered, numbered, or unordered, bulleted lists.